Let's look at a simple sample problem here. Uh, if 185 grams of lead to sulfide was actually obtained in a reaction for which the theoretical yield was 239 grams, calculate the percentage yield. Okay, so real simple. So we have to get the percentage yield, percentage yield is equal to actual over theoretical times 100. So, what is the actual? Okay, there's the actual 185 grams. The theoretical okay. the theoretical 239, so we get 185 grams divided by 239 grams. Grams cancel out, so we have no more units times 100 to give us our percentage. And our percentage, remember we have three significant digits in our question, so our answer must have also three significant digits, which is? So 185 divided by 239 will give us 77.4%. Let's look at a slightly more difficult sample problem. Upon heating, sodium metal combines with chlorine gas to form solid sodium chloride. If 8.30 grams of sodium and 14.0 grams of chlorine are heated together, a total of 19.5 grams of sodium chloride is isolated. Determine the percentage yield. There are a few extra steps that we have to do. Okay, So here, what we need to do is make sure that we do go through the whole stoichiometric problem. So, first thing in terms of stoichiometry, what is it? What do we want to start with? Write the equation. Okay. So, we have sodium plus chlorine. And remember, chlorine is diatomic. Produces sodium chloride. Okay. So, to balance this, well, we have two chlorine, so we want two chlorine, and we have now two sodium. Okay, so right now what we have, okay, let's put down some of the information that we have for each one. So in terms of sodium, we have 8.30 grams of sodium. We have 14.0 grams of chlorine, and we have 100, or sorry, 19.5 grams of sodium chloride. Now, what we want to do is we're going to put this aside. Put this aside for now. Now, we want to know if we combine the two together, okay, how many moles really can we have of each one? Okay, so what we want to do is we want to take that step that we took last class where we looked at the limiting reactant. We want to figure out how many moles, okay, how many moles of sodium okay, will be made if we have 8.30 grams and how many moles of chlorine will we have if we have 14 grams of it. Okay, so take a moment and find the number of moles of each one. To find out the number of moles of sodium, okay, remember the uh, our pyramid, we have molar mass, mass, and the number of moles. So to find that, we cover up the number of moles and we're dividing the mass by the molar mass. So we have 8.30 grams divided by the molar mass of sodium, which is 23.0 grams per mole, which will give us 0.361 moles. Okay. We want to do the same thing. We want to find the number of moles now of chlorine. So we take the mass, 14.0 grams, and we divide it by 71.0 grams per mole to give us 
0.197 moles. Okay. Now, we're going to stop there for a quick second. We're going to look over now at our product. 19.5 grams. Is that an actual or a theoretical? That is? Actual. Actual. Okay. This is the actual. Which means we're going to need to find the theoretical. Okay. We're going to need to find the theoretical, but we can't figure that out. We've got it. We, we can use the, um, the chart, right? So we've got uh, okay. our chart here. three parts. And the part that we want to put first is the part that we want to find. We want to find the number of moles of um, sodium chloride. We have moles to molecules. We have how many moles of sodium? 0 0.361. How many moles of chlorine? We have 0. 197. How many molecules of sodium chloride do we have? Two. Two. How many of sodium? Two. Two. And chlorine? One. Okay. So what we want to do now is we need to figure out how many moles of sodium chloride we can produce. So to do that, okay, to do that, we do what we did the last time. All right? We want to find between these two. But then we also have to do one more. We gotta compare, bless you, the chlorine with the sodium chloride. Why? What are we doing right now? What are we trying to find? We're trying to find the yes, the number of moles, but why can't we just use one? Why do we have to use both of them? We have to find the limiting reactant. We need to know. We, we can figure out one, but if we don't know what the limiting reactant is, we cannot really find out exactly, or theoretically, what, how many moles we've, we, we've, we've calculated, or how many moles we're going to produce of sodium chloride, because we don't know which one of these two, is it the sodium or the chlorine that is gonna run out first. Okay, so take a moment and find out the number of moles that, each, that uh, sodium is going to create of sodium chloride, and how many moles of sodium chloride will be produced from that many moles of chlorine. 